It stands as one of 1990's most shocking stories. 18-year-old Sonia Larson was found murdered. 17-year-old Christina Powell. 18-year-old Crystal Hoyt. Early this morning. Three young women, all students, have been found. There was uh, mutilation. Manny Tabot. Tracy Paul is brutally murdered at their apartment. And I say, hello, Satan. This was the ultimate nightmare for parents who are sending their kids off to college. In a space of three days, one after another after another, students in apartments being killed, totally vulnerable. Now that the death toll has reached five, students are talking of returning home. I'm terrified. I couldn't sleep last night. It's really scary. What's the worst that could happen? Well, this was the worst that could happen. Me and the devil. They have a serial killer. Serial killer head. is on the loose. It must be that I'm John Donvan, and in the early 90s, ABC News sent me to Gainesville, Florida to cover the story of the Gainesville student murders, one of the most horrifying stories that I had ever covered. Today, people walk and wonder if he walks among them. Me and the devil. Gainesville is a college town located in north central Florida. It's a beautiful area of the state. My name is Paige Beck, and I've been here at the station for more than 31 years. We don't have high-rise buildings here. It still really has a small town feel. The university plays a major role here. It's the major employer. It's a really well-regarded research university and um, really large, beautiful campus. It's known for its partying. The students come here with the idea that they're going to have lots of fun. Football is definitely king. Come on, Here we go! So we're very student populated area. We have a large amount of apartment complexes. A lot of houses and a lot of streets, but there's part of it that's just wooded. But once you're about 30 yards into these woods, you feel like you're in another place, in a secret, hidden place. So it's an incredibly easy place to go undercover, especially at night. During the summer, it's a little slower. You could literally drive through town during the summer without hitting your brakes, probably. Around the second week of August, there's a lot more activity. You'll see the traffic really pick up in Gainesville. The students are coming back. The energy of the city really picks up. There was a lot of excitement over the start of a new semester, Gator season. The legendary band Fleetwood Mac of Go Your Own Way fame was booked to headline Homecoming. You can go your own way. And two of the new students caught up in that excitement, Sonia Larson and Christina Powell. They were moving to Gainesville to begin classes. My name's Allison Emery, and I was Christy Powell's best friend. Christy and I met in high school. Our graduation was outside. Yeah, let us see the diplomas. Are they for real? We were just so excited about the next phase of life, about moving forward, about college. All books, tuition, room, and board paid in full. Compliments of Mr. Of Mom and Dad. <laughs> as soon as she knew she'd been admitted to Florida, she was all gator all the time. She got a beautiful gold gator necklace from her parents as one of her graduation presents. Never took it off. Yeah, I promise before yeah, years from now, y'all will be going down to Gainesville. If you make it down the aisle, we'll be there. <laughs> and we have to rent a bus. My name is Ada Larson, and I'm the mother of Sonia Larson. Sonia, 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 Sonia. Sonia and I were very, very close. You got so much and my hair. <laughs> Sonia was the dream child. Don't worry, be happy. Everybody who knew her said she was an incredibly sweet, lovely girl. She was a lot more reserved. And she liked to work with children. So these two young women, they had met over the summer doing some uh, courses, and they decided to be roommates. We looked and looked for a dorm that she could go to because I hated the fact that she was going to be in, a, in an off-campus location. But we couldn't find any. They were booked full. So Chrissy Powell and, and Sonia Larson had found an apartment in a complex. It's called Williamsburg Apartments. So this was move-in day for them. 
and this was going to be their first night in their new place together. Christy's sister and brother-in-law, as I recall it, were supposed to bring her bedroom set and all the things that she was supposed to have in the apartment. And so they arrived Saturday morning and nobody answered the door. There were some notes on the door from friends like, hey, we went out. We had no way of reaching her. The phone hadn't been installed yet. She hadn't called us. And finally, the Powells, who lived closer, went over there. Her parents came down, you know, to figure out where she was and what was going on. And they banged on the doors and ultimately, I think, got a maintenance person at the apartments to ask to be let in. I was wondering if it would be possible for me to have an officer to meet me. Okay, what's the problem there? I have two girls. The parents uh, suspected that something's wrong with them or they've disappeared or something. I'm just not sure. And my manager informs me not to go in by myself, but okay. to get something by police officer. Oh, okay, go ahead. We have some me too. And an officer, Ray Barber, went to the door and the Powells were behind them. My maintenance man broke the door in and I was standing behind him and um, the deputy sheriff was behind me. Then when he went in, I followed him into the apartment and saw the, the young lady on the bed. And you could see, you could see her in, in, a, in, a, in a bad position. And I just turned around and walked out my maintenance man, unfortunately, ran down the stairs screaming, oh God, oh God, and came out and he threw up. And the sad, sad part about it is we had the parents behind us on the stairs. When he came out throwing up, the parents knew that something was not good. I need a supervisor and ID criminalistics and detectives to respond down here to this apartment. The police officers who went in there, would later say that they ne had never seen a crime scene like this. Two women who had had a terrible ending to their lives. Downstairs, Christina Powell was lying, having been stabbed to death, having been raped. He had mutilated her breasts. Sonia Larson, who was on her waterbed, she had multiple stab wounds to her arms and her torso. And there's something that's that the officer noticed right away that was very unusual. She was supposed, um, all her clothes were off. Uh, she was lying back on the bed with her feet on the floor and her hair was fanned out, almost like a, dis a display, but a shocking value. I screamed and my husband didn't know what was happening. He came out and took the phone. It was just a, a, a horrible, horrible day. We just got in the car and headed for Gainesville. And um, I had to have my husband stop at the side of the road, and I looked outside, and the stars were shining, and I just looked at God, and I said, God, why? How could this possibly happen? Why did this happen? Waylon Clifton was the chief of police in Gainesville, and he gets the call, and I recall him telling me that he didn't really want to have to go down on a day when he was home watching football, but the officer who called him said, no, you've got to get here. Two white females uh, that are deceased in this, in this apartment right behind us. My great concern as I went home that evening, uh, rather late, was that uh, we have an individual that in my mind, personally, I felt would hit again. Sheriff's officials will only say the woman appears to be in her late teens. And then we found out about the third murder just eight hours after the first two. So we knew that there was a, a monster out there. But now, the bloodlust was just up to a whole different level. Me. 